Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Command & Conquer Rivals Tips and Tricks, Episode 3. This time I want to talk about unit, uh, army composition. I'm going to show you some past battles and just go over basic tips and tricks about uh, what to build to go with uh, preemptively. I'm going to look at my enemies as well as mine. Um, but like this one, this guy right here. Uh, that I'm fighting actually has a bad army composition. This is what you don't want to do. He's starting off with a war factory and then going off to a tech lab. That's not bad in of itself for the buildings. But he has three expensive units. It's a lot of expensive units. Usually you only want one or two. Um, so he's got three heavy late game units and one from the tech lab that's not so expensive, but again, from the tech lab. So it's also going to be late game. So now four of his units or actually late game, so the only thing he has early game is an APC and a pit bull. Now, these can handle most things, but this gives him a definite weakness to, say, tanks. Um, and it forces him to be left with only the strategy of rushing. Now, being left with only the opening strategy of rushing is not bad in of itself. And of course, I don't know what he's got, so. Um, but he definitely has a two harvester build, so he needs those heavy resources and a tank can screw him up real bad, which I do have in my army, and that does cost him the game in this one. Uh, both of those weaknesses I use against him. Let's go and watch that real quick, and you can see. Establishing battlefield control. Got the volume really low, because I've been having volume issues. Hopefully you guys can still hear it okay. Let's speed received. this up a little. So I go for my basic harvester rifleman scout. He goes for a rush. I see that he's rushing. I try to get my harvester out of there. He goes for a heavy rush. He puts a lot of stuff into it. I'm trying to do some body blocking. He does the same thing to make sure I can't run away with my harvester. Then I get a pen. Um, I do manage to save it initially. But he comes in with some more. And I'm going for uh, creating a wall. Try to uh, use my dying rifleman as a sacrificial pawn. If I need to move it back and forth, bring in another guy. But he actually manages to kill the rifleman, create a hole, come in. He gets my harvester. So now we're, we're, we're at an even match. He's going for double harvesters. Here's where I get in the tank, though. And he's got nothing to deal with this tank. I don't know this, but because of his army composition, I get that in. Uh, I'm getting rid of the harvester. I'm carrying up his armies. Um, and of course, we're going to be with the Got the fields, and he just keeps going. So he goes to move his harvesters down away from it, and bring something to finally deal with the tank. Late game, my eye on cannon, and at this point, I think he just gave up because I got his harvesters again. Building online. I, I don't know what he's got, so I'm thinking he might have zone troopers or something to bring out an anti infantry because I've got stuff for tanks in air. And then, like I said, he just gave it at this point, but... Yeah, I just took out so many of his harvesters. He had no economy to pump out a lot of late game, and the first time he did get something that could help him, I had so much money I just used my power on it. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I hurt his economy, which is a, weak, a weakness of his, and I was using tanks, which is another weakness. Um, let's look at this other one. Now this one is a different mistake. This person has a huge money problem. Um, they're using a barracks, a war factory, an air factory, and a temple of Nod, which alone is very expensive. Um, and to rely on his late game stuff for anti-air, uh, anti-tank, and anti-infantry, he needs the double harvester build. So again, he's using a lot of expensive stuff while needing a lot of expensive buildings. Um, but he does have a decent early to mid game because he's got the op he's got the basic barracks build, so he can deal with every you know rush and stuff at the beginning of the game, and he can build up to a war factory and an airfield as needed to try to counter things, fighting uh, tanks decently, uh, and giving him a little bit of either anti air or anti infantry. Um, but he will be weak against air and infantry. Now I don't have air in the army I'm using. Uh, and he does use this, I think, quite well for what he has. But he's very reliant on, again, being money-heavy in the double harvester build. And because of his power, he can't even handle infantry pretty good. Um, so really, it's air is more his weakness. Control. And again, that's more early and medium game. Late game, he gets to handle it. If he gets the money going. New objective available. You got it. 
a very similar starting builds. I see that he's got two harvesters, so I send in my rush to screw over his harvesters using turrets. There's a lot of body blocking that's really done well in this one. I've got it sped up a lot. Um, a lot of constant just harassment. He's good for the air. Uh, he probably honestly would have done better if he had gone for the tank. And I messed up there. I allowed him to get that first missile and I could have blocked it. But at this point, I've got so much money. I'm building the uh, anti-vehicles and air, so he's stuck using infantry. Which he has for his late game, so I mean, he could actually do quite well at this point. You see, I'm throwing away my weak one now. Throwing away my weak one, getting a fresh one. Throwing away my weak one again, uh, killing his harvester, and trying to get a fresh one. I'm constantly doing that, and my plan, the best anti-infantry I have is APCs. So I figure I will try to keep fresh anti-tanks and air up there, so he's got to do infantry, and then keep throwing out the APCs and the turrets. Which, again, it was mostly body blocking, I got the missiles and it was game. Um... This one, this guy actually has a good army composition. He, he is, uh, has a bit of a weakness, I think. No, no, he's just got a good army composition. There's nothing wrong with this. He's got a good early game, good medium, good late. Um, I don't even know if I should bother showing this one. And I've been sick lately, so I've been doing a lot of misclicks. A lot of you are like, ooh, you messed up there, there, and there. I know, I've made mistakes sometimes, and nobody's perfect. <clears throat> eh, I'll show it real quick, but this one's just a good one, honestly. I, I don't see any army tips to suggest to that. He's got early game, medium game, light game. He's got stuff for infantry tanks and air. Uh, I went for a basic rush, he retreated, defended properly, did body blocking, good job there. I got out a harvester, so I'm actually about the same as money, I'm only disadvantaged by units, which because I can build the counters, I can sort of make up for that. And I do very well that he goes for vehicles, I've got to go into tanks and protect my own. Yeah, yeah just, it's mostly just counters at this point. Trying to hold the points, so I think we both have a missile soon. He's trying to use French arrows and got an APC back there. I got some of my light units. I've got two harvesters at this point, so I've got a money advantage, and I use the expensive units, which is enough to actually give me the uh, good one. Honestly, I'm not getting a second harvester is the only reason why I won that. <clears throat> but if he had, he also would have had less units. It would have been a slightly different game. That was a good match, though. Let's see, this guy, Shark. He is a weakness to air, early and medium game. He does not have good anti-air. So this is, again, not a good build. But knowing your weakness, it might not be a bad build either. Um, the only thing he's got early game is anti is his little turret for anti-air. Medium game, his, uh, his first air unit there can fight air, but not very good at all. Late game, he's got plenty of anti-air. But if I was to run an army with air early to medium game, he couldn't do just about anything to me. He could make me, uh, avoid the turrets, that's it. And that's another thing, those turrets, if you see someone build one, just run away from it. It actually dies very fast. They only stay on the field for a few seconds. And they only have range of one. So if you just move away, you could usually still stay even on the command point and just avoid it entirely. And then it blows up and dies and you don't have to worry about it. So it can do very little damage if you just move. Uh, and when putting it down, you want to put it down in a place where maybe he can't move away from. Use it as a body blocker. Or where it could fight multiple people. So if he moves one away while he's doing that, it's still doing damage to the other guy. And if that guy does get away, they can turn and shoot the other guy, even if he tells it to run away. So it can shoot and damage this guy, then shoot and damage that guy. So it gets more time to do more damage before he can get out of the way. Or if you've got a guy blocked, it's got to go past the turret, you know, or go into a bad spot. So sometimes they'll, they'll just stay and fight, you know, or you can force them off of a control point with it. But, uh... Or give you some time, you know, like, hey, he doesn't want to come to the turret by putting him in the spot. And that's the only way to this control point without going all the way around the map. 
Anyway, like so this guy's got a weakness to air. I don't have any air, so this is actually a good a good battle. I'm not even gonna bother showing it. I won this one, but it was just skill. It had nothing to do with uh, unit composition, which is the point of this video. Um, all right, here's an, another interesting one. This guy, I'm running my infantry air build, and he does have early game with the war factory anti air. The scarabs can even fight air, and late game anti air. And he's got stuff to handle the infantry late game. But he's only got the scarabs for early game. So his early to medium game is definitely lacking some anti-infantry. Um, which should hurt him in this battle. I don't even remember what happened. Um, the only late game anti-building thing he has though is the flamethrowers. And you can't rely just on the scarabs. The scarabs are they're versatile, they're very useful. But at 30 points, and I can cancel them by sacrificing rifle and weak guys, they're not necessarily cost effective. They can, they can be countered quite easily if done properly. They can't push forward, they just hold the line pretty much. So he uses a tank, I'm using body blocker, body block. I use that rifleman to block that tank twice. Um, and then I sacrifice the rifleman into a scarab. And again, you see me sacrificing the rifleman into a scarab. Again, sacrificing right from the So I'm using 10 point guys to take out these 30 point guys. And yeah, sometimes I've got to use two. But a lot of times they're already weakened from fighting. You know, um, and he used a scarab good there. He took out a 60 point unit with a, you know, a 30 point unit. You know, out of the three or four scarabs he's built, one of them worked out. You know, to get those money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm using my turrets to keep him back in my air. He finally started building his tank unit, but it was too late. Anyway, but unit composition, it's very important. If you look at what I'm doing here, I've got two buildings to build my units, right? Um, and that m makes my cost cheaper so I could afford more units, more powers. And I'm using all cheap units with this one except for my anti-air late game, which if he doesn't build air, and he did in this game, I don't even need it. Makes my entire army super cheap, and I can just spam my expensive power in this case. Um, and a lot of fast units to get up there. Uh, another army of mine. Um, I've got my early game infantry, in game, you know, war factory. I only have three buildings in this one, much like he does. But I only need to build my Temple of Nod for my one late game unit. One. So I can I have access to my five units for early and medium game and a pretty cheap power. Uh, so if he plays anything expensive, that's like 90 or 100 or more, I could just use the power to wipe it out. Or if we're fighting around Tiberium, I could take out multiple units of his. Um, so I could easily afford to use that power when needed, take out his expensive guys, and then use my late game guys uh, pretty effectively before it runs out as a surprise for the sideboards for anti-tank and air. Um, but even before that, I've, I've got, you know, anti-tank, anti-infantry, anti-air for medium game, all three of those for early game. You want to be able to handle everything at every stage of the game. <clears throat> and have access to versatility. Uh, he, he does good with versatility on this one because he's got infantry, air, and then late game tanks. So he's got a threefold change, which is good, where I'm only doing infantry, then tanks, then back to infantry as sort of a flop. I would say his versatility is better than mine for the types that he's using, but we match each other in buildings. Actually, I think my buildings are a little cheaper because he's using a helipad where I got a war factory, so I'm saving 10 points. That's not a lot. Um, but as I said, his army has a weakness to air, early game and medium game, where mine does not. Um, this one... Uh, I actually have to do the rush with this one, with the War Factory, but I can handle infantry with my flamethrowers and my buggies early game pretty okay. Uh, tanks with my actual tanks or attack bikes early game pretty okay. And then air with the attack bikes and the buggies. Um, again, just okay early game. In late game, I've got the infantry, which can handle infantry tanks and air uh, for my two infantry guys. And then my slow moving worm it's mostly just for if i need to handle a big vehicle 
or if I need to go take out his harvesters for a huge surplus of money to pump out a bunch of those infantry. If, I've, if I'm running, stuck running only one harvester, if I can't get two for some reason, I will pump out that worm first and then use it to kill his harvesters. And if I just got, you know, 100, 200 points extra, that's enough to easily pump out two, or by the time both of those pumped out, I could build a getting them three of my big expensive infantry. Um, like I said, this guy's got a decent army, but that laser cannon for his anti-tank medium game, it's very easy to kill. Honestly, uh, I don't think that was necessarily the best way to go. I think he might do better with this by going for a basic tank, because the tank will be 40 points cheaper, a lot easier to pump out you know, maybe two instead of just one. <clears throat> It'll be a blocker frontline guy that he can actually get on the point, which the attack bikes die easily. A lot of those infantry could die quickly and easily. Um, but you know, he's going to have a hard time keeping people on the points. You know, and he won't have a body blocker for that essentially artillery piece, anti-vehicle artillery piece that he's got. Um... I think he's got a very good army composition, but he should switch out that Giga Cannon for a Scorpion tank, and he would do much better, in my opinion. Uh, but I do like what he's got going there. Here, and again, you can see I do heavy anti-infantry, then heavy anti-tank, and this is the guy who had to go for expenses because this stuff cost a lot and I just rushed him. Um, he, his mistake was just needing to have all those factories and expensive units. He's got two things. T to have his full army is going to cost him a lot of money. To have his late game is going to cost him a lot of money. And the games are so short. Needing that much money to make your army work, there you have to sacrifice something. He, he's going to have to sacrifice either his air or his war factory. You could do a build like this, but you have to plan not to build something. In this case, he didn't build his war factory, um, which made those scorpions practically useless in there. If you're going to do something like that, I would suggest maybe doing the air tower with the anti-air only, those really big air guys that are good against anti-air, because if your opponent doesn't build air, you don't even have to build your airfield. You know, you don't need your anti-air. If they do, then you can build the airfield to counter them. Um, I guess in this case, if your opponent doesn't build vehicles, you wouldn't need the war factory. But this, the airfield does the same thing. That's, that's the point where this is bad. He's got a war factory to build anti-vehicle and an airfield to build anti-vehicle, and that's it. They're both doing the same thing. He should drop one of those and add a second unit from the other one to give him more versatility for the medium game. So he's, he's got his early game, he's got his late game, but right now he has two different medium games that do the same thing, but he's got to pick one. Or if he uses both, he's screwing himself. So, and I mean, yeah, he could pick which one his opponent's not good at. Oh, my opponent's building stuff that's good against tanks but not air, or air but not tanks. I don't think picking is, is the right choice. I think he would do better at doing two air units or two war factory units. Uh, but that's my opinion. And did we go over that a little? I don't know if we would have this. Oh yeah, this was the guy who was weak against tanks. Um, my army on this one. Again, you can see I'm using only three factories. I'm not using like four. Uh, and he's doing good with his factories here, too. And he's got a lot of decent versatility. He's just too much expensive stuff. Too much stuff reliant completely on a tech lab. Again, I would suggest one or two expensive units. Even going for three is really pushing it. I went for three with one of my armies. Let me pull that back up real quick here. This army of mine on the bottom here. I've got the worm and the two infantry guys. Um, that is three. That is definitely risky and pushing it. But I'm kind of making up for that by... And I'm doing something very similar to him. However, I've got the versatility early game. I can handle air, infantry, and tanks uh, all early game with my war factory. And I'm doing the rush. Yes, my rush needs to succeed. Yes, this is a resource-heavy build. I really want to run with two uh, 
harvesters. But I could run with one if I get enough money early on from rushing his harvesters, and I get the worm, and I can re continue to take out his harvesters. I can use his harvesters as my income. And you'll see some people who do this. I've seen some people who don't even build a harvester. They'll rush and use their money from killing your harvesters to pump out more units to continue countering your units. Maybe pump out one harvester much later. I've, I've run a few people that I've never even seen them build a harvester. And they're actually doing pretty good because they're managing to kill my harvesters. And um, Sometimes they beat me, sometimes I beat them, you know. But that is a viable option to run completely off of the death of your opponent's harvesters as an income. And I do sometimes try to do this with this army. Uh, but even then, I'm still usually running one harvester. I don't, I don't like to focus on that. And again, I have to build the second one if I'm not able to, to do that. Um, but yeah, this guy, he, he needs those two harvesters. He's got, he's hoping his opponent does not get out tanks early on. He's hoping for infantry, he's hoping for air, he's going to counter that, get his second harvester, and then get enough money to pump out these big units. And at that point, he can do good. But running that weakness is really risky. And he has so much stuff for anti-whatever he needs. Like He's got an, the two walkers. Between them, they can handle infantry, tanks, and air. And they're all vehicles. And his other two units are vehicles, too. He's got a heavy anti-infantry and then a heavy anti-tank and air. And I think what he should do is he should either stick with the two walkers, which can handle everything, or the other two vehicles, uh, which can handle everything. Because he's got two sets of two different heavy late-game units that can handle everything. And he doesn't need that. And they're all vehicles, so it's not like he's even changing up his... His composition to like an infantry and vehicle or, you know, vehicle and vehicle. He's not doing that at all. Um, so I think he should definitely either drop the two walkers or stick with the two walkers for his late game. And that would give him two additional units for early game. He could either run the rifleman rocket squad so he could start with a harvester and not need to rush. And then he could have the, the option, depending on the map, to either go straight for the war factory and rush or go for a harvester and a scout, and then defend himself and then build up to the war factory and then build up to the late game. And that would also give him, if he had, say, a rocketman and a rifleman, um, more anti-tank capabilities with the rocket guys. Uh, heck, he could even do like what I did with Minotti. He could drop two of those late game guys. He could go for a tank, which now he could actually fight tanks off, you know, head-to-head -head early game. And then he would still have an extra unit to put into something else. Um, honestly, all of his units being tanks, too, is a huge, huge mistake in this one. So, something that could do infantry. Like, say, say he went for a tank, for his anti-tanks, and he's got the War Factory and Tech Lab still, and one extra unit. He could either put that unit into the zone troopers for an, a powerful late game infantry unit if he needs infantry that can fight tanks in air or he could put that one unit into an APC from the war factory which when that dies gives him a rocket squad so he could use that for full versatility to fight you know air and infantry and then when it dies he's got a rocket squad for anti-tank um but something, you know, to give him a little more versatility so he's not running all vehicles uh, would, I think, be useful. Or even potentially an air unit, uh, maybe from his tech lab. But again, that's late game. He, he needs more early game. So definitely dropping two of his late game units or two early game units, whatever they may be, and something that can handle tanks, which is his weakness, would make this much, much better. Um... Anyway, but I think that is enough to talk from just talking about things. Uh, as you can see, I spent some gems. I finally gave in and bought the uh, the 50,000 credit packet, and I upgraded a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to do a quick match here. And you know what? We were talking about unit composition. Let's, let's make a new army. Let me move some of this down here. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's show you how I designed something here. Right. 
so let's say I'm going to try something different. I want to decide what kind of units do I want. And usually I look at my other armies like, what do I not have? Like, this guy's got, you know, the rocket guys for early game. The big unit that's good against vehicles and air. I'll cover my camera up there. This thing's got a lot of mobile shoot and move units at the end of the game. Um, so those are not the two things that I want from this. I don't have, I don't think air with either of those. Oops. No air. No, yeah, neither of those have air. So something that uses GDI air would be nice. How expensive do I want to go? Hmm. Well, if we're using air, let's start with this. And I can take stuff out later. That gives me anti-everything. Then I've only got three other slots. Don't want to start with an airfield, because it's expensive. It's not exactly going to rush very well. Let's see here. What if... I have my basic rifleman start. And I'm using air. I would like some vehicles. But what kind of vehicles do I want? Maybe I should say air is more expensive than say, you know, a war factory. So instead of a tech lab, maybe I should go to a factory. I've got really good anti-air with that 100 cost light game. I've got decent anti-air early game with my rocket squats. Anti-vehicles, 70 cost light game, to, or more of a medium game. Not the best though, but then I can get rocket squats again early game. And then anti-infantry, I got rifle into that. Um, so something that could fight late game infantry would be good. A vehicle would be nice. But I don't want to go into a tech lab if I can help it. So I want to keep my costs down. So I wonder, is this guy here against infantry? No, he's actually not. And that's tanks and buildings. I don't want that. <laughs> decisions, decisions. I almost want to switch out some stuff. Maybe instead of my ultimate expensive anti-air, I can stick with bombers. This gives me an air weakness, which I can make up for. Yes. You. Alright, so this way I've got four units that can fight air. Um, but I've got an infantry that can fight air, two vehicles that can fight air, and an air that can fight air, even though it's not very good at it. Uh, so whatever his air units are not good at fighting, I could use. And I don't think this can fight air. Yeah, it just targets ground. Um, I've got air for vehicles, air for infantry. I've got two vehicle units, one that can kind of fight vehicles and one that can kind of fight infantry, um, but they both fight air. They're going to be weak against tanks, but when fighting tanks, I could use my rocket squads and I could use my 70 cost air unit. Also, because I'm not using a tech lab, that's going to save me a lot of money. I've got barracks, air factory, and war factory. It's very basic across the board. That's going to potentially mean I have a lot of money saved up, especially if I've got things from air and vehicles that can harass harvesters. So, I want somebody with powers that is going to cost me a lot. Um, I've got a lot of fast units, so let's plan on using this guy. His power is expensive, but the important thing about it that I'm thinking here is if he gets really expensive units or units I'm having a hard time killing, I can wipe them out for 150. I've got the money. And if he has a control point, and I've got all these fast units, if he sends two or three units to take a control point, I can wipe it out with the ion cannon, and then just move my fast unit in, take it at the last second, and win with that. So, hopefully he'll clump up units or have more powerful units I could use that power to counter. 
I have to have my volume all the way down practically, uh, because for whatever reason in the recording, it comes out really loud. So, I can't hear all the cues. Could be at a bit of a disadvantage on this. Let's see how we do. And this will be a wrap up. Ooh, this is a bad map to start with the harvester, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Because this build was not designed for Russian. I could have gone for a war factory and rushed with, uh, Pit bulls, or Unit oh, ready. Uh, yeah, I really should have rushed. He went double harvester. I need to get a second harvester on myself now if I want to keep up. Harvester ready. Or oh, kill one that he's got. Unit lost. Oh, crap, he's coming right after mine too. Unit ready. Unit lost. Unit lost. Let's get online. Okay, I got that. Yeah, one second too slow. Major yeah, factory. Press as hard as possible. Actually, I was trying to stop that. Take the thing. Going in here. Unit lost. Unit ready. Ion cannon activated. See? Oh, right there, get a fresh one. Ready. Um, this guy. Oof. Unit lost. Too, too good for me. Rifleman ready to move out. I can't pull out. Ion cannon activated. We got the harvester under attack. You got it. Let me talk. Unit ready. Scouting ahead. Get these bastions onto the fields. If I can do that and fire this missile, we'll be over. Alright, I got it. Oh, the Harvester lost. Away from the Unit ready. Okay, in the air. Ion cannon activated. Oh, I'm Unit lost. Infantry ready. Heavy anti infantry. <sighs> Zone troopers are getting used to air Convoy and vehicles. Which just left my rifle. <laughs> my iron cannon was not enough. Who am I creeping? that one um and see i learned something about that army this army can't handle zone troopers very well my best bet for zone troopers is riflemen and they're not going to win in a one-on-one -on -one fight i need two of them to take on the zone trooper um if he had built say he was not and he had built the gatling gun guys my apcs could handle them if he was using the cyborgs i probably would have been in a similar situation though 
where I'd have to rely on my Iron Cannon, and it doesn't charge up enough when he's spamming Zone Troopers or Cyborgs. So, this was actually not a good build, despite what I was thinking. I thought I had versatility, and I do have versatility, but it's not enough, because Riflemen being infantry to deal with infantry won't work. I need to unlock snipers. Snipers with this would be a whole other game. But I don't have those yet. Um, let me move this down here. I need one more level to get snipers. If I had GDI snipers, that would make that army far more feasible to handle close it. It just replace the rifle with snipers. And that would be my anti infantry with all game, I would actually be able to drop um, several of my units. I would probably be able to drop my cheap guy, the 30 cost guy, which is just an air unit that's good against infantry. I just stick with my snipers. Hell, maybe even my APC. I just stick with my snipers. And I could focus on more anti vehicle and anti air. Um, but snipers are also expensive, so they wouldn't be my scout. I'd have to use something else. For my scout, maybe start with the war factor. Some, um, yeah, because they're 50 cost, they're definitely not cheap. Uh, but there's a lot of things I still need to unlock. I mean, APC, I could unlock if I had the card, um, and even with not, I don't even have. <laughs> Missing two infantry special units with Nod. Um, need to level up for the rest. I actually have most of the Nod stuff, though. And they're still coming out with new units, like, every so often. So, uh, the game's not officially even out yet. Hopefully this helps with the unit composition. I have a ten tendency of going on and on, and I have apparently done that with you guys. I apologize. Uh, enjoy, and I will see you next time and when you're building your armies don't forget have something early medium and late game for everything learn from your mistakes you know i learned from mine i, I messed up i learned what my army what i thought could handle could not handle mm. um, and now i know not to use that again until i've unlocked something better and i'll you know try to keep that in mind next time usually what i do if I, we actually look at my other armies i've, I've learned from the mistakes um with say this army uh Actually, no, this army kind of has a similar weakness. Oh, power problem. Was this one. This one has the heavy anti-infantry with, with the ranged artillery. Uh, that's something that I like to do. Um, in fact, what I'll probably do with this army... I hate dropping the air if that's a focus, but I could do like this for vehicles. Actually, if I'm doing that for vehicles, maybe I could drop my early game vehicles stick with the back to the air. So that's more pricey though. Well I did have a lot of extra money. This way I could do infantry, then air, then vehicles. That probably would have been much better build for what I have because the mech would be a better anti-infantry vehicle to handle um, not the cyborg. Well, yeah, the cyborgs or the uh, zone troopers. Anyway, but that's the only light game. But he didn't get them to light game anyway. If I had done a rush too, I probably would have been good one. Here I am rambling again. See you guys later. Hopefully this helps, and you'll remember when building army composition. Try not to do all four buildings. Two or three is usually what you want. Uh, and don't do too many expensive units. One or two expensive units is what you want. Um, and know your weakness. Learn from your mistakes. See you guys later. Have a good day.